seven WMMS. Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. My name's Alan Cox, and my show sucks. I did or 1-800-348-1007. Larry David's going on tour. What? What? I'd like to go see Larry David. I would love that. Yeah. Is he doing stand-up, or is he just doing, No, like, it's like one of those Q&A? sit there Q&A things, yeah. yeah. I think it'd be great. He's doing about uh, half a dozen cities. Cleveland, I imagine, is on the top of the list. Cleveland, that is the first and last date he's doing. He's bookending the entire tour with stops in Cleveland. He's doing a place called Imposters Theater. Oh, that's a, Never heard of that place? Yeah, I have. I'll be there no, <laughs> next time I'm there. I think November 1st. You're going to be there the next time you're there? Is the that what you time, said? I will be there the next time I'm there. But <laughs> November 1st is the next time I'm there. A Conversation with Larry David is the name of the tour. Uh, just days after the Emmy Awards, where Curb Your Enthusiasm is nominated, and he is nominated as well. I'm very confused by the Emmys this year because I think it's this weekend. But every day there's things about people who've won Emmys. And I'm not clear what they're doing. There's so many Emmys now, too. Yeah, but it used to be they would announce ahead of time, like, the technical Emmys, right? Oh, this guy got sound editing because they're not going to put him on TV because who cares? But, like, a few days ago, Jamie Lee Curtis wins Best Supporting Mm -hmm. Actress for The Bear. Angela Bassett finally gets an Emmy, but it's, like, for a voiceover, so that's kind of got a stick in her craw. You know she She got it, but you know she wants one for acting. And that is acting. Voice acting. Yes, but one for, she... One where her face is in it. Yeah. I mean, she got nominated for an Oscar for frigging Black Panther and lost. So, you know, she's always at the top of the list of people who've never gotten one and should have one, you know, like Glenn Close. And Anyway, the conversation with Larry David, you will have to go to Chicago if you want to see him close to here. Chicago or Philly. Uh, he's doing Denver, Seattle, San Francisco the Georgia, Portland, Oregon, Phoenix, Austin, and Hollywood, Florida. If you want to go down to Hollywood, Florida. Florida So September 20th through Thursday, December 5th, a conversation with Larry David. I'd love to try to get to that Chicago date, but again, this is one of these shows where the tickets will go on sale. They'll all get scooped up by the bots. Mm -hmm. And then they'll try to sell them back to you. I mean, under normal circumstances, this would be a high-end ticket. And these are obviously not massive venues. They're certainly big. These are theaters. But, um, you know. And who knows? Maybe things will go so well that he'll add a second show. A lot of times that's what happens here. Chicago Theater is 3,600 people. So you're not talking to, you know, it's not the Romo Fijo. But I think that would be a very, very entertaining. A lot of fun. Alan, you like all the unique names in sports. There's a new running back for Ohio State named Quinn Sean Judkins. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name. I mean, you're going to be hard, even though he's not an athlete, to top Donaldvin. But uh, Quinn, Quinn Sean Judkins. I like it. I don't mind it. Speaking of Florida, I was looking at a story about an 84-year-old woman who's recovering in the hospital after getting attacked by a gator down there in Florida, and she punched it in the face. Hell yeah. Right? That's how you do down there. She's walking her dog, trying to live her life. And it's Florida, so these gators just come out of nowhere, and they're fast. Well, they don't come out of nowhere. But you don't always see it. Yeah, they come out of the water. You're right. Fort Myers Beach, Florida. And this woman is uh, recuperating in the hospital. A woman named Del Boppel. What is going on? <laughs> An old woman named Del Boppel. Del Boppel. Yeah. Her hand looks pretty mangled, but she's alive. Yeah, but... And she was just trying to save her dog in this. It's a moment of survival. I could understand men and women in war now. 
oh. where it just turns. Wait, what? She can understand men and women in war. Huh. All right. Done. This woman is my hero. She is amazing. Tonight, NBC2. On 9 11, no less, Bill. Have you no decency, madam? Speaking with that woman who was tacked attacked by an alligator in North Fort Myers, and she lived to tell yeah, about it. She was walking with her dog when a seven-foot gator snuck up and grabbed onto her. Only NBC2's Hope South. Boy, they got you coming and going on local news, don't they? You know what? Local news, I don't know if it constitutes a rebound, but when they talk to people, they'll do surveys of people in which media they trust. <clears throat> and uh, as you might suspect, all the different forms of media, you know, it's a common complaint, and it's really bipartisan. The people don't trust the media or they feel like they're constantly being lied to because everybody's siloed off. And so when they do these surveys of which media do you trust the most? Internet, all that stuff, that's at the very bottom. The top is, let's be real, radio and Thank local you. news. So I don't know if local news is making any kind of comeback, but most people will say the local news in my community is my most trusted form of media. A situation like this, they really got you coming and going because the old axiom, if it bleeds, it leads. If somebody dies, it's that's, a big story. That's why my most trusted uh, source is women. Why are you? Why? Giving you a compliment. Why? Because they, they bleed. Mary, your thoughts. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, She's got her head in her hand. I hate him so much. Uh, the amount of hatred I have in my heart for Bill Squire is it grows. Wow. It, it, it exponentially even. You know what that means. Let's give the people what they want. Time. It's about damn time. For the Mary Santera and Bill Show. On today's episode of the Mary Santora, Tara, and Bill show, uh, <laughs> Bill's fired. Any departing words, Bill? Did you say any departing words? <laughs> yeah. What if the hell is going on over you there? You can't fire me. It's my show. It's mm, it's no, our it's show. The Mary it's my show. My Mary. name's first. Well, Alan, first of all, you shut up. Alan, you're, you're not, not even here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Mm-hmm. Our producer. I'm, here, here, here I am, <laughs> trying to support my friends and support women by saying that uh, I... Trust them. You don't support women. I support them the most. You don't. I support them more than you do. No, you don't. All you're ever talking about is how you're the only funny female comic. Nobody's ever said that. You say that every day. I didn't even win the female funniest female comic in Cleveland. So you weren't here. So you. Well, you're fired. Probably won it in New York. You're fired. What are your departing words? You (laughs) have thirty seconds. All right, my departing words are. You have thirty seconds. Are you soaking right now? Oh my God! I got. I'm not even joking. I'm gonna leave the studio. (laughs) It's the, it's the it's the, the fact that you don't see it coming <laughs> that makes it so funny <laughs> and how angry it makes you. I'm just Kamala just over here, here just Four just hours a day doing I have to doing to this. exactly what we know I'm gonna do every day, <laughs> and you take the bait every time. It's not about taking the bait. It's about you being the worst, just the worst. The bait's taken. There is no bait. You're fired. Back to the Ellen Cox show. Master baiter. Let's give the people what they want. I don't take the bait. I am. She does. About damn time. For the Mary Santera and Bill show. As they say in broadcasting, another one in the can, kids. Yeah, you. <laughs> anyway, back to Del Boppel. <laughs> the woman who fought off the gator. My point being, they got you coming and going here. It's going to be a top story if somebody dies, and it's also a top story if somebody doesn't die. They survive. They survive. Woman spoke with her from her hospital bed today. She says she's in good spirits because her dog is okay, but doesn't want anyone to go through what she went through. She says that gator was fast, and she had to think quick to save herself and her dog. It was like a torpedo. I have never seen anything move that fast in all my life. I didn't have time to think. Del Bopple's evening dog walk Thursday was the scariest she's had. All of a sudden, I had a premonition. I'm telling you, it was like, uh-oh. 
that gut feeling. What? I don't think she knows what a premonition is. I had a premonition. Uh Uh-oh. You tell me, Mary. You're the one who believes in premonitions. It's not uh (laughs) uh-oh. Was she premonition man- is when you see something before it happens. Was she manifesting her survival? If she, yeah, if she had a premonition here, she would have not let her dog get taken by the gator in the first place. I don't know if the dog got taken. Or, That's like, what, get attacked, he, snuck well, up on. Yeah, we're going yeah. to find out. You're not getting snuck up on. We're going to find out what happened to Del Boppel here. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was like, uh-oh. That gut feeling was a seven-foot gator about to lunge right at her. That alligator took off like 35 miles an hour, and I'm not joking. Bobble says she got close to the pond at Julia Mobile Home Park off Slater Road. She saw a gator's eyes looking back at her. Before she could think of anything else, she tossed her small shih tzu named Queen up in the air. I'm sorry, what? You heard it. Mm-hmm. I took a big old swaller out of it, and I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. She saw Gator's eyes looking back at her. Before she could think of anything else, she tossed her small shih tzu named Queen up in the air. Then the Gator chomped. She took a chunk out of me. After a few good hits, that Gator did scurry away, but not until it took a chunk out of her leg and fingers. So who would you say first, if it was the kid or the Gator? Who was you, who are you? Probably the dog. <laughs> Popple says she's... What are they laughing at? This lady, like, barely... She lost fingers... Got a huge chunk out of ice. She's alive, of course, but they're all laughing on her. So Complained old. about the what? She's old, dude. Yeah, 84. The big gators to her community. They have not reached out to her and also have not returned my calls. Dell says she's no, able shots to laugh fired. now because she knows when she gets home, her dog will be there waiting for her. Reporting in Fort Myers, Hope Salmon, NBC2. That Hope Salmon's pretty foxy, but what a petty wrap-up. She has not returned my calls. Oh, Mm -hmm. well, she's in the hospital, lady. She's 84. She's not long for this earth. How do you, I imagine that. No, that's not who's, she's talking about the city didn't return a call. Oh, the city didn't return a call. All right, well, there you go. The city did not return her call. They have not returned my calls. Don't they know that I'm Hope Salmon from Channel 2 down here in Fort Myers? Her Shih Tzu Queen threw her up in the air. Yeah, well, I know that no matter where you live, after a while you get used to your surroundings and you go about your life probably not with a lot of situational awareness. That can happen to the best of us, right? You can sit in traffic and get to work and not know how the hell you got there because you're like, I'm just zoning out when I'm in my car. But I really don't understand how anyone living in Florida isn't constantly scanning bodies of water for frigging gators to run out. Everything in Florida is trying to kill you. It's not the people, it's the animals. The heat. So this woman's like, I've never seen anything like it. You you guys are poon tang deep in gators in every turn. And they always seem to be coming up on old ladies with tiny dogs. They know what's who's susceptible. That's what I'm saying. Like they those Gators smell a snack. But she's alive. That's good. Yeah. She's okay. I took a big old swaller out of it, and I was like, "Uh Mm uh-oh. Not a lot of people can say they fought a gator. That is true. Her and Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Got a clip of her 911 call here. 911 emergency. Help me, please. I crashed my flying machine. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not the uh, end. Uh, I know he's in an immense amount of pain there. Help but... me, please. I crashed my flying machine. Ah. That poor guy. He's doing okay. And there's no gator in that story. This guy's out in the desert trying to get up there with a flying machine. I mean, since uh, going back to Da Vinci, right? Since man could conceive of engineering feats to to try to get them to join the creatures of the air. Man has been trying to fly. And that poor guy, that's what happens. People making fun of him. Uh, we used to have a young man on this show named Pound Cake. His name was um, oh, we did not. Cody Brown. <laughs> but um, one of his more charming traits was that he was poop shy. He did not want to poop at work. 
and a lot of people are like this. He's not alone. There were a lot of people that were on uh, team home poop. But they're trying to get people, um, it's not good for you, depending on how long you do it, right? A lot of people, we were talking earlier, Mary, drinking the poppy gut health pop or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of, that whole situation there is a little dubious. But based on how people normally eat, it's probably not great to hold it in all day long at work. And the health department in uh, Queensland, Australia, is trying to get a campaign going to tell people to poop at work more because they're trying to not only destigmatize it, but also, you know, help keep the trains moving when people are at work. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time, right? That's right. And so um, they've got a whole... It's something that's interesting. I wouldn't think it would rise to the level of a PR campaign. Right. (laughs) But uh, that's what they... How much money are they mm -hmm. losing? I, I don't know. But the um, it's okay to poo at work is the name of their campaign, saying let it out. This is considered taboo, and uh, they don't want uh, people to be living like that. You know, there's a lot of places now that are testing the four-day work week, which if you are poop shy at work, that's going to give you one extra day to drop it at home. So I don't know if maybe this is the best time to do this. Unless they're trying to get this, uh, maybe they're going to go to a six-day work week. And this is just a preamble to getting people more, like, hey, you better get used to pooping at work because you're going to be here more. Do we know anybody that uh, is from Australia that can weigh in on this? Aussie me here. There you go. (laughs) I'm awake and we need to poop more at work. They're telling us if we don't offload the wallabies at the pool. (laughs) Offload the wallabies. (laughs) Right. It's <laughs> an interesting slang that I didn't. I like learning about it. Things uh-huh. are different down under. Yeah. Uh, if we don't, um, you know, we like to eat a bit of beer and some steak with rice for our dinner, and that can clog you up. And if you're clogged up, then you take an extra time uh, to get to work, or maybe you have to uh, avoid using the bathroom, and then your cubicle stinks. Um, but all in all, it's a good. It's a good thing. Beer and steak. Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't realize that those were like lunchtime staples in Australia. All all the time. All the Every time. Day. Mm-hmm. I can certainly see why that would bind you up. Yeah, a lot of protein. Well, is it binding you up or is it clear? Because if you're bound up, then it means like you have time to get home. But, but we don't want to hold it. But I mean, like I'm saying, like you might not be able to get it out. No, you can get it out. All right, you just drink you can, a poppy. You can drink poppy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just drink a poppy mm-hmm. and. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. All right, You'll run, well. run right through you. You drop those wallabies off at the pool. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh-huh. that a snort? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, no. <laughs> Our no. All right, well, anyway, thank you, Ozzy, man. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have uh, attracted 22,000 likes on their post on Facebook. We want people to not be scared to poo at work. We want people to achieve a stress-free public toilet poo experience. I also have to think that maybe, I've never been to Australia, but I also have to think that they might be a little bit more advanced in the dissemination of public toilets. You know, like pay toilets, where there's just kind of like a giant thing on the sidewalk there, and they're, they open up and they look kind of high-tech. There's a lot of cities trying to make that a thing. Constantly ignoring your need to poo could lead to things getting stuck in your colon and other serious issues. So part of it is destigmatizing it in the service of people not um, giving themselves issues. Sometimes they say it's referred to as poo paranoia. Hmm. There's got to be a better way to say that. poo annoy <laughs> Got to be a better way to say that. They say a lot of people might experience symptoms like increased heart rate, sweating, or nausea. Ooh. How about that? If your, if your heart rate is increased because <laughs> you have to poop so bad, that's a tough situation. No, I yeah. think when they think they have to poop at work, their heart oh, rate okay. Like, it's gotcha. like anxiety yeah. around that. Yeah. It smells like the devil pinched off a loaf in here. Visual, they say that, uh, remember that everyone poops. These are little mental exercises they suggest people can do. 
Visualize someone famous on the toilet. <laughs> how will that help? I don't know. You know how they go, wait, hey, wait, do you have wait, trouble? Wait. Everybody pick their person. Who's yeah. the, who, who, what famous person are you visualizing on the toilet to help? Aubrey Plaza. Okay. Weird one. Yeah. Uh, Weird one? Like, yeah. There's like a. Dumb, dumb and dumber. dumber. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. It's about family. Yeah. Vehicle identification <laughs> number diesel. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Dropping the kids off at the pool because it's about family. It's about family. <laughs> yep. I live my life one quarter <laughs> inch at a time <laughs> on the toilet. All right, well, there you go. Jeff Bridges, Aubrey Plaza. Not Jeff Bridges, Jeff Daniels. I'm sorry, Jeff Daniels, Aubrey Plaza. Jeff Bridges also kind of worse Diesel. because he got the swirlies in uh, Big Lebowski. Mm -hmm. but, From the Nihilists. Yeah. Nice marmot. <laughs> I've got to take a break. I will come back.